Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Gerald here from Studio Ploy. So for today's video, instead of the part 2 for our industrial MCM makeover, I would like to show you this first. These are actually easy DIY projects that you can do at home. So I've collated four of my favorite, current favorite projects or current IKEA hacks that you can do at home. So without further ado, let's jump right into our first DIY project. For our first project, our main item here is this Blandomat serving bowl in 11 inch diameter. Then, some bolts and nuts and if you have washers, the better. Plus this gray round tray that I also got from IKEA. We are going to create an accent stool with storage from this wooden serving bowls. I came up with an idea to create this stool for an ongoing project as an alternative from a much expensive stool that you can get from furniture stores. This would perfectly complement with the interior that I'm creating for this space and what's more exciting is it's not just for accent as it'll be multi-purpose. This can also be used as plant stand and the upper portion of this tool can serve as storage for small items. Sobrang dali lang nito. This is going to be very simple and easy that we are just going to integrate all the materials to create one unit. The first step is making sure that before we drill into the bowls that it's properly aligned. I make use of frog tape here but you may opt for a clamp or some other materials enough to hold the bowls. Next is to drill holes habang magkadikit ang puwet ng bowls or its bottom part facing each other. I am going to make holes with this very chic drill that Hoto sent me. Thank you so much by the way for sending me this black beauty. This is now my current favorite. Going back, we just need to properly and durably combine the two together. Then we now install the bolts and nuts combining the two bolts creating the body of our stool. The ideal number of holes for combining would be around 3 or 4 to properly secure it without compromising the strength of the bowls. Using a wrench, I make sure na mahigpit or the connections are tight but not overly tight to hold each other without damaging the bowls. And for the final touch is its cover with this cement tray that we also got from IKEA. And the final result in 3, 2, 1. This tool perfectly accentuates the living area while doubles as a storage for small stuff like chargers that would help keep the space uncluttered. For our second project, we are going to upcycle this very simple plant pot into something rustic and unique. For the tools and materials, what we need are Centra board, an E6000 industrial strength adhesive, paintbrush and lime wash paint in charcoal black. I find this pot too simple for the space that I'm doing so I came up with this idea to upcycle it and make it look like a vintage looking ceramic plant pot. My idea is to create a texture with vertical paneling or some sort of fluted element on the upper half of the pot. And to create that I'm going to make sticks from centerboard with a centimeter width. 
I chose center board as a material so I can easily manipulate the width, size, and shape of the fluted element due to its flexibility. For the edges of our fluted element to look more organic, I am removing the edges with a cutter to have a more filleted or chamfered finish. I am doing this freehand so not a single stick is identical to each other which is what I wanted to achieve. Then the next step is to cover the entire upper portion of the plant pot with the sticks that we've created with the E6000 glue. The fillet or chamfered part should be facing up and creating an interval half the size of the stick. I initially used a guide but then after getting a hang of it, I was able to install it faster without the guide. I wasn't able to cover the entire pot the same day as I ran out of sticks. If you notice, the last part that I'm covering are a little longer than most of the installed ones. Last few were made at home and I have to make an extra allowance to make sure that it would fit at hindi bitin. Then I left it to dry for an hour before cutting off the excess. For this part, I also did a chamfered cut for it to have this imperfect or organic effect. In preparation for painting, I have to sand the entire area that will be painted with a lower grit sandpaper to help the paint adhere to the surface more. This is going to be the first time that I'll be applying lime wash paint to a recycled plastic and center board. I wasn't sure here if it would work. The specific color that I'm using here is charcoal black. This would perfectly create a vintage matte looking finish to the pot. Initially, it may look dark but as it dries up, it'll have this lighter gray black color to it. I make sure that everything are covered thrice with the lime wash then onto the inside part halfway enough until the covered portion. Same with the outer part, I also applied three coats of the same lime wash paint inside. I left it to dry overnight then on the next day after removing the tape I applied the matte finish top coat to add a layer of protection to the paint. My intention for applying top coat here was actually to make the lime wash paint more durable because I wasn't really sure if it would work on plastic but unexpectedly after the top coat dries up it creates this patina effect that perfectly makes our plant pot vintage looking. I am using here the Rust-Oleum Protective Top Coat in Matte and I got this from True Value. The following day the pot is ready for styling. Using a scrap corrugated carton, I will create a cover that will also be covered with some dried moss that I got from Landmark. Basta yun na yun, 5 a.m. na. Then, 
this should cover the base of the faux plant and at the same time covers the unpainted lower part of the plant pot. We're using lifelike faux plants for this project so I make sure every detail of our pot complements it and make the entire plant and plant pot look cohesive and real. I am going to cover here the entire carton with dried moss using hot glue to keep it in place. This would make it look more natural looking. And the final result in 3, 2, 1. Update on the pot, it's been over two months since I've finished this project and the entire pot are still perfectly intact and fine. Project number three is another easy hack. We are going to upcycle this old orange mammoth children's stool into a chic looking plant stand with this black and white rasoleum paint and primer. I got this way way back on sale for only 300 pesos. My idea is to make it a two-toned minimalist looking stool and plant stand. Black on most part and a portion up to the connecting part of the four legs will be in white. I initially tried covering the lower part with frog tape but the tape won't adhere so I ended painting the bottom part first with white. The plan was to actually tape the white part once it dries up and proceed painting the rest of the stool with black but I ended peeling off the white paint before noticing that the bottom part of the legs can, could actually be removed. Palpak tayo dun, it was a setback. The paint says it's compatible with plastic so I thought it would stick the same as I would use it on wood. I'm also learning every time I'm creating new DIY projects. It's my way of testing out my ideas if it would work or not. And with this project, most of the time, happy accidents happen. Going back, after removing the legs of our mammoth stool, I immediately paint the upper part with black in three coatings to fully cover the orange color. Since the paint that we have are all in glossy finish and to also protect our paint, I will be applying this clear top coat in matte on both black and white parts. Matte finish has low level of sheen resulting in a smooth, almost powdery appearance. Unlike higher gloss finishes, it absorbs rather than reflects light, meaning it disguises imperfections brilliantly.
Then I left it to dry for an hour before I start assembling the stool again and I was so happy that the paint stick very well and that it looked so good complementing the entire space. And the final result in 3, 2, 1. The idea for this final project came after I erroneously coated the two nightstand and was only able to input the amount for one. The amount would only be able to purchase one decent nightstand and the design won't even fit the entire theme of the space. So this was my solution, a very simple but practical hack. The main item for this project is IKEA's Ekit. This small cabinet usually are wall mounted with an option to put legs to it but the problem is none are available at the moment. If there is, it is way too low for a nightstand unless we stack two of this agate cabinet but it will be way beyond our budget. Fortunately, I was able to source out the perfect height for its legs in gold finish which is a bummer as we need black. But of course, we have another practical solution for it later. I went on assembling the two cabinets using again my new favorite drill that I now call BB, which stands for Black Butte. This is one of those IKEA products that you can actually install on your own without the need to pay extra for installation. All you need to have are the basic tools. Setting aside the assembled ekits, I went on painting the gold stand to perfectly fit the overall style of the space. I went with black to perfectly contrast the white cabinets and for it to still blend with the accent wall and at the same time have this floating effect. By the way, you might wonder that instead of installing the cabinets directly onto the wall, I went for legs. Well, aside from the flexibility of it being movable with legs, the existing walls won't be able to hold heavy items as it's made of gypsum board. After painting, I left this to dry overnight before I start installing it onto the assembled egg. Making sure the screw won't damage the cabinets, I created shallow or pilot holes as guide for the screws. I have to be extra careful on installing the legs as some parts of these cabinets are hollow and an extra amount of force will damage it. The installation of these legs went well and the decision to create pilot holes paid off that I was able to install all the legs without any damage to our cabinets.
The last step and our final touch is installing this black knob. This was actually the knob that I removed from our previous project's shoe cabinet that I replaced with brass. I find it perfect for this nightstand with its black legs. And the final result in 3, 2, 1. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in two weeks for the part two of our industrial MCM makeover.